Hello and welcome to a new video about electrochromatic, electrohydraulic. This time we are going to talk about valve parameters. Uh, last time we talked about how to select a valve. We said, okay, it should be selected according to functions and so on. Uh, today we want to discuss some parameters. Uh, because, you know, there are a lot of parameters in the manufacturer's uh, catalogs and so on. And what to... I want to give you a feeling what it means. Okay? One important thing inside such valve yeah, is the flow. Okay? We need a certain flow through the valve. Why we need a certain flow through the valve? Yeah? Because we want to move a cylinder. We want to move. I have to mention the obvious, right? So we have to, to, to move something. And if we want to move something big, big cylinder, we need more medium, yeah? more air, more oil. Yeah? If we want to move something fast, we, want, we need more medium. So if we want to move something big fast, we need really high flow. If we move something fast, we need high flow. If we move something big, we need high flow. If we move something small, slow, then we need low flow. Okay? So this depends on the cylinder size and wanted speed. Yeah? Depends on cylinder, size, and wanted speed. Like said, to mention the obvious. Okay? So, what parameters are influencing the flow? Well, on one hand, there is the nominal flow. What is the nominal flow? The nominal flow is the measured flow at a fixed condition. Okay, so there are fixed conditions, yeah, and we measure the flow at these fixed conditions. And these fixed conditions, in pneumatic world, they are usually if we have in front of the valve we have six bar, after the valve we have five bar. And through the valve passing is the nominal flow. Okay? These is, are the conditions. If you have different levels of, of pressure here, then we do have a different flow. Yeah? Nominal flow. And then there is also the nominal size. Nenngröße, German. Nominal size. Inside this valve, we have different flow cross sections. All right. So some sections are wider area, some sections are smaller area. And the nominal size is the smallest flow cross section there is in the valve. Okay. So this is the smallest flow cross section. And what is the value? The value is not I know square millimeters or something like this, it's given in millimeters. Yeah? Because what is given actually is the diameter of a fictional hole, round hole, circle size shaped hole, yeah? which have the same area. Okay? So what is given is the diameter of a fictional hole, circle. Yeah, with the same area. So if we have, I don't know, nominal size number four, yeah, then it's four millimeters. You do not find this four millimeters somewhere. There is no hole with four millimeters. It just means a four millimeter round hole would have the same area as the smallest flow cross section. Okay, and this four nominal size 4, they are usually for, in the pneumatic world again, pistons smaller 50 millimeters. Hmm. And there are 14 for instance, this is then big. Big pistons, big size. In this area we usually are. Huh? So flow, this is one big topic. And then another big topic 
is the pressure range. This also needs to fit. Good. Usually there is given a minimum and a maximum pressure. All right. So there is a range. It's not zero. There's minimum and the maximum pressure. I mean, the maximum pressure hopefully is clear to everybody. This is because of, of strength, body strength, strength of valve body. We want, do not want to break this. We do not want to explode this, have this exploded. Yeah? So there's a maximum pressure. Yeah? Don't put in more pressure because then the valve is broken. This is clear for everybody, I hope. But why we have a minimum pressure? Because of those things here. This is pre-control. And we said <clears throat> in this pre-control Oh, I'm missing here a spring, only, only the pneumatic spring. Because of this pre-control, yeah, we need to have some pressure here yeah, to be able to operate against the spring and so on. Yeah, there, there must be a minimum pressure. If I'm not having this minimum pressure, I'm not able to control the big valve with my pre-control stage. Yeah? So this has pre-control reasons here. But what if I want to control with a pre-control valve something which really does not need a lot of pressure, does must not have a lot of pressure? What then? I'm at the end of the line or what? No. There are also valves which do have a separate pre-control pressure connector. If the operating pressure where the pre-control pressure is usually took off is not sufficient to meet your minimum pressure, yeah, then you need to select a valve with a pre-control pressure, separate pre-control pressure. Okay? Yeah. So separate pre-control, separate control pressure. Might be the solution then in your application. If this is if this is the case. Huh? What else do we have? Switching time. When is switching time to be what does it mean switching time? The, time, the switching time is the time between activation of the coil huh? and finishing of the switch. Uh -huh. So time between activation and finishing finish of switch. This is the switching time. Usually they are very low. Yeah? In normal application, I would say this has not really an influence. Yeah? However, there are applications where you might end up in really looking at this because this can slow, this is slowing things down simply. If you need some time to switch the valve, yeah, then the cylinder is reacting uh, delayed and so on. Da, 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 this will simply add time. Yeah? And if you have, for instance, I don't know, uh, an application where you really have to switch between two slides and, and have to separate parts and they're falling through and you really have in, 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 in parts of a second you have to decide if you're going to the left or the right slide and have you moved then this needs to be considered okay and there is also then two times uh, two different switching times yeah? so usually the switching time in this direction where you can really put back power with the coil. Yeah? This is usually a shorter, shorter switching time. 
And in this direction where we only go back with the spring, yeah, this is usually a longer switching time. All right. Same issue you have in the combustion engine with the valve control. Yeah. Opening is quick, closing needs to have the spring and so on. Yeah. Pretty much the same topic. Yeah. Switching time. And basically that's it. Yeah. Valve parameters. Now we have talked a lot of the valve parameters. The valve itself, the hydraulic pneumatic parameters of the valve. Uh, next time, next video, we're going to talk about the coil. Because there are also different, different coils out there. What type of different coils there are and how to adapt these coils to your need will then be covered in next video. For this time, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.